welcome or welcome back to my channel today we are gonna do an updated gua sha frequently asked questions video because i've been wanting to redo it for a while now because the audio on my last one just really bugs me and we're doing it over my l fanning gouache portrait it's just a tiny one and i used my holbein gouache for it full list of materials that i used will be in the description and also my patreon where i do real-time gouache and watercolor portraits is down there too but onto the q a the very first question we have is what is gouache gouache is very simply defined as an opaque watercolor so it's a water medium paint but i would always say that the best way to approach it as a new medium is to think about it as its own separate medium from watercolors because it applies very differently it's very opaque and what makes watercolors special is its transparency so they're almost opposite ends of the spectrum but in its most basic form gouache is just opaque watercolors so the next question i have is what is the difference between gouache watercolors oils and acrylics so gouache versus other painting mediums basically and since i've already talked about the difference between watercolors there's a very big jump from gouache versus oil paints and acrylics and while gouache and watercolor are very similar in their making gouache and oil paints and acrylics are very different mediums altogether because the binders are different for oil paint i think it's just oil and with acrylics it's it's plastic so you really feel it when you're using the colors and one thing that makes gouache different from both is that gouache after it's dry it can still be reactivated like how some artists would pour their watercolors and they're very easy to reactivate and use again that's how it is with gouache and so it's a very delicate process to layer gouache when with acrylics it's very easy because once they're dry they're immovable and i think it's the same way for oil paints um, they just dry longer there's also a difference in the finish in that with oil paints and acrylics they sort of have this glossy look to them so it sometimes makes the colors look more vibrant with acrylics and oil paints but also it makes it reflective so when light catches it the wrong way it's sort of hard to see the colors meanwhile with gouache the colors look more flat but then they're also very consistent through different angles that you're looking at it from so that's yeah, the thing that's different about gouache there is acrylic gouache which is sort of a hybrid between acrylics and gouache and that it maintains that matte look to that gouache has but in its application it's very similar to acrylics i think it has plastic on it too just like acrylics but it will maintain that beautiful matte quality that gouache has the next question that we have is what brand is the best and i can't really answer this fully but i can only speak on the ones that i've tried and i guess i'll list the ones i've tried and that is i've tried holbein i've tried mia gouache i've tried the Michello gouache recently i've also tried the may mary gouache i've tried sui and i think the last one i have is the winter newton gouache so the ones i recommend is the Holbein gouache and the Mia gouache and the thing about the Holbein is they are the best ones that I've tried and that's because they are so completely pigmented and they're also affordable for being artist quality and of course that changes according to where you live and since I live in the Philippines sort of Japanese art supplies aren't that expensive outside of their price they're still the best ones that I've used I think that they're very similar to the Winster and Newton designer's gouache but I don't have gouache that is as thick as my Holbein gouache or maybe the Maymary um, the thickness is very similar to Holbein's but the quality isn't similar to Holbein's so Holbein is my most recommended but the other one I actually recommend just as much now and that is the Himi Mia gouache if someone is a very 
beginner to gouache i would always recommend that and that's because it's just so inexpensive and the thing about this is that it comes in so many colors in such a low price that it's almost unbeatable the only way i would recommend the whole binds over this is if you're planning to do commissions or stuff like that where you want the paints to be permanent you would want artist quality paints but the Hemi gouache, they apply in the same way as artist quality gouache and that really is all that matters when you're starting out. It helps you practice how to layer, it helps you get used to the shifting of the colors, just things like that that you would experience anyway if you were using artist quality gouache is what makes the Hemi Mio gouache so special. The next question that I have is, does the price of the paints matter? And this is sort of a good segue from the last question. It still does matter, especially if you're already a professional artist and planning to make money off of especially selling your paints. Usually artist quality paints are going to be more light fast, so the colors aren't going to change over time and usually that's the case for student quality gouache also something about student quality gouache is they have a lot more maybe binders to them or other stuff that's not just the pigment and the binder with artist quality paints you can really see how pigmented they are with student quality gouache the colors sort of gray easier colors aren't permanent just stuff like that but like i said before in application the way you paint with student quality gouache is still going to be the same way with with artist quality gouache i think that only will matter if you are already a professional versus a hobbyist so the next question we have is what paper is the best for gouache and I feel like this is something I am alone in saying is cotton paper isn't really that good for gouache because I feel like it really makes the shifting of the colors when they dry versus when they are wet I think it's so much more apparent I think it has something to do with how cotton paper absorbs water that it really makes the differences in the colors so much more different and so it's a personal thing, but I actually prefer using either cellulose watercolor paper or not watercolor paper at all. You see, I actually use very thin paper sometimes because it forces me to use thick gouache. And so there's not that much shifting in the colors when they are wet versus when they are dry. So I would just suggest either cellulose paper or, or whatever drawing paper you have, you will be able to use it with gouache as long as you use the paint very thick. If you use a lot of layers and use gouache very loosely with a consistency that's very close to watercolors then I would suggest using watercolor paper that's not pure cotton. Next question I got is which brushes are the best for gouache and I've said before that I use my watercolor brushes and my gouache brushes almost interchangeably but that's because of the specific brushes that I have. I have the craft ammo brushes and I think that they are really good at being watercolor and gouache brushes. If you're just starting out with gouache, I would just go with watercolor brushes that are labeled to be snappy and and would hold their shape. Other than that, the kind of brushes that you would want would be a lot of flat brushes. I think they just complement the opaque, blocky shapes that I generally go for with my gouache paintings. And then a couple of round brushes for the details. The next question I have is how do you layer with gouache? And I just love this question so much because that's the most complicated thing about gouache really is how you layer with it. So the easiest way to say it is to always go from loose watery paint to thick paint. That's how you would want to build your layers up. A very, very good video I found is by Mary Sanch. I will have her video linked in the description, but she explains the consistencies that you go through with gouache from tea to butter. So I would suggest to watch that video or just in general, keep it in mind. You always want to layer thick over thin. 
after you get the hang of that, then you can experiment with glazing, but that's a skill that comes over time. But yeah, in general, thick to thin is how you want to go with layering your gouache. The next question is very simple. How much gouache do I need? And of course, this depends on many factors, like how big your painting is and how long you usually sit. Sittings usually are when you're painting. But in general, you might want to at least underestimate how much you will need because it's better to use fresh paint over time and I'm talking about when you're using tubes but also when I used my Himi gouache I would scoop them out and put them in a palette as little as I can just because I like to use fresh paint as much as I can there are also some paints that don't reactivate as beautifully as others and so in general I would just squeeze out little bits at a time or at least such as much as I'll think I'll need for for maybe an hour of painting question that I'm always asked is how do I seal my my gouache paintings and I personally don't seal my paintings. I've read that wax mediums are good for sealing your gouache paint. I, I haven't personally tried it. I've also seen people say they use a fixative spray which I think is braver because I would always be scared that it would reactivate my paint because it does come out very watery but yeah wax medium that is usually used for oil paints that's what people use i've heard um but i personally don't seal my gouache paintings or at least not at this point i do eventually when i get into it i just don't have the resources right now uh, the next question is how do you make sure your sketch doesn't disappear and this i think is one of the good things about working in layers with gouache is that you're working with thin paint before you work with more opaque paint and have your sketch eventually disappear but since i do mostly use very thick gouache the thing i do to deal with this is to really just paint in sections divide the sketch into different elements so i work around the sketch as i move up this could be big elements like separating a portrait from the background but also very tiny like when I'm tiling my sketch I would work in sections like the smallest details on the eyes or the planes of the face divide them into work one by one so I don't lose the whole thing completely because it is a very real thing that happens with gouache it's just a consequence of working with an opaque medium I think Another question is what colors are best for skin tones and I generally want to advise not to associate any colors with skin tones and to just focus on the reference photo that you're working with because sometimes it's not as black and white as just assigning colors as skin tones but if you want specific suggestions I will have a list of the colors that I use most often for skin tones and I will have it in the description but even then I still use my primaries to shift them a certain way but yeah in general make sure you're isolating the colors on the reference photo that you're trying to replicate instead of just thinking in a list of skin tone colors so the very last question that i have is is there a limit to how many layers you can use with gouache and i will just say this again would depend on how you use the gouache I've seen people use very thick gouache and I've also heard about gouache cracking and I always say that I use gouache very thickly but I've seen other paintings where I go that is really thick so I do just say in general if you feel like the paint will start to crack or if it feels like you're adding a significant amount of weight to your paper then that should be enough especially if your paper is thin and it moves around and you have thick gouache over it just really try to gauge it for yourself because there's no set answer just try to be aware of not really how many layers you're adding but how thick your painting is getting other than that you should be good i've never had a painting crack or even be remotely close to cracking so yeah That is it for this updated gouache FAQs. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me. And I will be seeing you guys again soon.